Thank you. I didn't realize I'd be this nervous uh, in such an honoring moment, so thank you. I'd like to share today uh, why I'm such a blessed man, and then I'd like to talk about feeding the world and how we've increased productivity, and then the need for more involvement in uh, politically and in education. And we've talked about that many times in the past, so what can I say that'll make a difference, but I'd sure like to try here this morning. Why I'm a blessed man, I got many different uh, aspects of that. Uh, first of all, I was born to uh, parents in North Central Iowa who had eighth grade education and who were uh, conservative, frugal, very productive, hardworking farmers. Secondly, I was blessed to work for Land Lakes during a 40 year period where we had tremendous growth in the food industry. And then third, I've had some great mentors, some great colleagues, and to be part of this technology that's come aboard this last 40 years. First of all, I'd like to thank NAMA. Thank NAMA for picking me as the Agribusiness Leader of the Year. That's a tremendous honor. I'd like to thank Land Lakes. And when you think of the organization Land Lakes, there's kind of three different parts to it, uh, how I've been blessed. First of all, uh, just to uh, have the different people to work with. And I just recently retired here in March, and so that's what I miss the most is the people. Uh, secondly is the travel, and I've got to travel a lot of different places, and uh, so just coming here to Kansas City this week is one of them, and it just renews my enthusiasm for travel. And then the third one is just the learning I've had, and just tremendous opportunity, and I'll miss that uh, a lot, uh, the intellectual stimulation, if you will, uh, coming from uh, being out and about with the people. We've talked about the employees and mentioned them, and uh, Amy, your comments were very kind, but under the umbrella of Winfield Solutions, that's a three-year-old uh, umbrella now that's uh, putting crop protection and seed together. and. Uh, the people I'd like to call out, first of all, our uh, CEO, Chris Polisinski, who uh, nominated me for this award. Uh, he's got a board meeting uh, today in Washington, D.C., working there. Uh, but, uh, and then the gentleman who replaced me, he, uh, I, uh, Mike Vandalot, worked for me for 17 years, and in the last year, I had a chance, a year, year and a half, to work for him. And so that's been a real uh, privilege. Uh, so Mike is now currently leading our seed part uh, under Winfield. There's three individuals here today I'm going to recognize. Uh, first of all, we have uh, Jack Carlson, who has been with us 13 years. He, he took our soybean business from 500,000 bags to uh, million, uh, 10 million 500 over that 13 year period. Uh, Josh Krenz, who's our brand manager. Uh, and our third one in is uh, Robin Steele. And uh, she's helped uh, craft the message that uh, uh, I'm sharing here today. And she uh, did all of the writing up of the nomination. So, would you three folks please stand and, again and give a round of appreciation to those three? Thank you, Jack, uh, Josh, and Robin. The fourth person I want to call out is my first mentor. And uh, I met uh, Bob in uh, 1968 in Okaboji, Iowa, as a rookie salesman. Uh, Bob was head of our seed uh, business at that time, and they talked about a fledgling startup business. It truly was that in 1968, as uh, Bob uh, invested his time and energy and money to help build uh, research seeds, which became the foundation of our forage business today. And so Bob helped me a lot uh, over the years, and so I'm just real proud to have him here today. Bob, would you please stand? Let's give a round of appreciation to Bob Tedinger. <laughs> Bob is now living in a retirement community over in Johnson County, so uh, he and Marcy and Karen and I are going to go out for supper tonight and uh, reminisce about the 40 years uh, plus that we've been together. Amy mentioned the great partnerships, and that's one way that uh, Land O'Lakes has had the opportunity to make the pie bigger. Uh, we started with Syngenta, when the old legacy company, Seba, putting their private label germplasm into Sunnyx Land Lake seed back in 1992. And then that became part of Novartis when NK and Syngenta and uh, Seba came together, and now today it's part of the legacy of the Syngenta company. We had our first uh, research agreements with Monsanto in 1992. And then we had distribution agreements for Asgro, uh, soybeans, and DeKalb in 1999 and in, in in 2000. And so that has become a very key partnership that's made the pie bigger for both, bringing those products into the co-op system. And then the third company on the screen there has been a very key part of our partnerships. We sold uh, three corn production plants and two soybean plants to Remington Seeds. And they've been a wonderful partner uh, over the years producing high-quality seeds for us to sell under the Cropland Genetics brand. 
So those are some of the companies uh, as, uh, that I've really been blessed to work with and the people uh, that have uh, made those partnerships work. The cooperative system. My dad was on the board of the local co-op, my grandpa before that, and now today my brother is on the board there in, uh, at new co-op there in uh, uh, west central Iowa. But it, it's really been a privilege for me to work for the company that's owned by the customers we serve. And co-ops in the north central United States were started for one of three reasons, to market milk, market grain, or supply petroleum. And so agronomy products and seed have been complementary to the cooperative system, and that's what's given us the reach is because of those other things that co-ops do. So that's been a real blessing for us in the seed business. The biotech industry. I got my first exposure to biotech from DuPont in 1988 when they talked about high oil corn. And that product was pretty important to us there for a few years there in the mid-90s. But then uh, we started inserting uh, genes into alfalfa in partnership with Montana State University in 1992. And then we started some of the research agreements, as I mentioned, with Monsanto, and then started selling the first products uh, of NK uh, corn in 1996, and then 1997, it just uh, grew from there. So biotech has certainly been a key part of our growth. And then lastly, I'm really blessed to have the family I do. You can see there on the screen our daughters Carrie and Suzanne, and our son-in-law Brandon, two young grandsons. I never aspired to be a grandpa, but now are six-year-old today and the three-year-old there, uh, Conrad and Bennett. And then I'd like to introduce my wife, Karen. Well, I've made the living, she's made life worth living. Give a round of appreciation to my wife, Karen, if you would hear. So you can see I've many, many ways that I've been a blessed man. Secondly, I'd like to share a little bit today about feeding the world. And, uh, you know, well, I've been blessed to be in, uh, and we've all been blessed in this room to have plenty. There's people in the world who are actually going to bed tonight hungry. So that's a key uh, obligation we have and an opportunity we have to feed the world. Here in the United States, we have about 50 million people who uh, have had soup or will not know where their meals are going to come from next week. So we, we put that in the area of food insecure. And we're very affluent, Woodbury, Minnesota, where uh, we have our church. Our food shelf has just increased immensely the last couple years. And so uh, we know that there's uh, even people with both, with both families, uh, both members of the family lose their job, uh, how important the food shelf can be. This is a busy chart, uh, but uh, it also uh, shows we had 840 million people hungry in 1990 in the world at some level of hunger on that uh, uh, pendulum. And today we got over a billion, one in uh, six, if you will, do not not know where all of their food's gonna come from or they're malnourished. So that's quite an obligation to feed the world. We've had demonstrations that in some cases have turned into riots. We had one in uh, LA here, uh, food versus fuel, in uh, February of 2008. Those of you can remember that. Uh, just this year in North Korea and in India, they've actually, demonstrations have turned into riots where people are wondering where they, and, and do not have enough food. So hunger will possibly become even a more growing challenge. If we're gonna increase the population here in the world from uh, six billion in 40 years to nine billion, and as the uh, third world countries develop their diets, we need, it's projected 70% more food. So again, Great opportunity, great obligation. And if we're going to increase this food, where's the land going to come from? Uh, we have to have more productivity per acre. It's been said that uh, of land available that has enough water to grow crops, uh, there's really three places, Brazil, Congo, and Ukraine would have both good quality soil and enough water to grow crops. So water may be the limiting factor, if you will, and how much more food we can produce. My grandpa took care of himself, wife, seven kids, and a couple hired hands in 1930. That was the amount of food, a very self-sufficient uh, north central Iowa farmer. My brother today on that same farm is feeding 155 people. If my nephew and his son choose to be farming 40 years from now, they'll have to take care of over four, uh, 200 people uh, in food supply. 
So you can see how that productivity has uh, gone up and up and up 